the GRE is the graduate required exam. And so essentially, if you're looking to go to university in America, you want to take the GRE. The only people who do not take the GRE are those who are looking to go to law school, mm -hmm. medical school, or some who are going to business school. Business school is one that accepts the GRE as well as the GMAT, so you can take either or. But for the mass, vast majority of people, almost any subject you can think of from literature, art history, physics, whatever it may be, you're most likely going to take the GRE. Okay. And, and, and uh, do business school accept GRE? But yes, business schools do accept GRE. The reason it's confusing is about five years ago, very few did. But over the years, more and more business schools in the United States are accepting GRE scores. In fact, almost all of the big programs. And so one thing you can actually do is you can go online to find out which programs accept which business school programs accept the GRE. But the the short answer is most of the most of them these days do. Okay, but uh, I mean there are institutions that accept GMAT for business schools, and uh, you say that if if someone takes GRE, they can apply to both business schools and other schools as well, right? Correct. That's what's so great about the GRE. It's very versatile versus the GMAT. If you're taking the GMAT, the only place you can go or apply to is business school. Okay. And uh, is there a specific qualification uh, for somebody to take a GRE? Not really, actually. I, I think walking into a testing center, setting up an appointment, and actually taking the test is all you need. You don't even have to have graduated from college. In fact, many people who take the GRE are still in college because they want to at some time or some point apply to graduate school. But there's really no specific requirement. You don't have to have a certain GPA, for instance, or you don't need to have taken certain courses. It's a very open to everyone from around the world sort of test. Okay, and uh, it is mostly aimed at uh... PG studies, that is graduate studies, right? Graduate, yes. It, it is graduate studies. And that's an interesting qu question because it's not just for people who are looking go to go to graduate school, but it's for those already who are already in graduate school who want to get their PhD, their doctorate. So it's for any tier of graduate school, the GRE is required. Okay. Uh, one small information for, for our viewers is that in US, graduate means postgraduate as we call in India. So in India we call a graduate as postgraduate. It's vice versa. Right? Oh, so, I see. So it's a little confusing. <laughs> yeah. So to clarify, GRE is aimed at postgraduate studies. Okay. What is the cost of this exam? The cost is $160 for those who live inside the US and 190 for those who live outside of the US. Okay. Just to have a recap, what is the sure. time duration of the test? I'm sorry, say, ask that one more time. What is it, or the time duration of the test? The test can be slightly over four hours if you include signing up at the very beginning, sitting down, entering in your name, and a bunch of other information, meaning that the GRE wants to know a lot about you and they're going to ask questions about your background. If you factor that in with the five sections and the two essays, and sometimes an extra section at the end, which is optional, you can definitely be there for over four hours. Okay. I mean, is there any time limit for each section? Uh, yes. Yeah. There is definitely a time limit for each section. So for the verbal section, there are a total of 20 questions, and you have 30 minutes in which to answer those 20 questions. For the math section, you have a total of 20, minutes, 20 questions, and you have a total of 35 minutes for the entire section. So at the math, same number of questions, but you get a little bit more time. 